Guys, my hair looks so whack in this video. I'm so sorry. It was tied up all day, and when I took it down, it just like had this weird shape in the end. Ugh. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ishi and you are an Ishi type. Today I am going to be filming my promised mini reviews and by promised I mean promised to like the four people who watch my channel regularly. Thank you, I love you. Um, anyways, I have about like five or six books that I would like to be reviewing that I've read in like April and like June early June. I also need to hurry up because I found like a little smidgen of time where no one is home so I've set myself up here with some plants. I'm sitting on the floor so let's get right into it. The first book that I read in <laughs> April was Dry by Neil and Jared Schusterman. I gave it five out of five stars. I actually listened to the audiobook and if you guys like audiobooks or even if you guys don't like audiobooks, I highly recommend this audiobook. It's amazing. They have different speakers for different characters and it's just, it brings you into the story. It makes you feel like they're talking to you. If you don't know, this book is about the drought problem going on in California and what happens is that they run out of water one day like there's no water in the taps no water anywhere they call this the tap out and then people are rushing to stores buying bottles of water and it just brings out kind of like the monster in all the humans because they're trying to survive they're trying to do everything in their power so they and their family can survive it makes them selfish and it's just amazing reading about like the desperation these characters are going through. Our main character is Alyssa, um, and then there's her little brother Garrett, and their neighbor Kelton, and then they meet this girl named Jackie on the way. I absolutely love these characters, honestly. Like, I was surprised that there were multiple point of views in this book, like I thought it would just be like through one point of view, but we read through Jackie's point of view, Kelton's, Garrett's, and um, Alyssa's and each of them have their own unique voice. Many of the times I find that when I read books with multiple point of views, like a lot of them are similar to each other, but this uh, book really captured the different point of views of the different characters and I loved it very, very much. Honestly, in this book, you see each of these characters get to the end of themselves and then keep going. The desperation that they're going through, you really feel it in your heart. And I just, I love this book so much. It has become like one of my top favorites. If you ask me for a recommendation, this is it. Freaking amazing. The next book we'll be talking about is Rook by Sharon Cameron. I was very, very, very excited to read about this book. It's set in like an alternate universe France. Basically, it's set in the future, but all the things happening are very like olden times. What happened was that there was this huge disaster and all technology was destroyed. So in the world that these characters live in, technology is nothing but a myth, like a legend, and people don't even believe that at one point in time technology was real. So this is set way, way, way in the future, but there's no technology. People have gone backwards and now they're back to living in like Victorian times with like horse-drawn carriages and stuff like that. Our main character is Sophia Bellamy and she is being married off to this guy named Rene. It is honestly one of the most unique books that I've ever read. I forgot to explain the most important part of the summary. Basically, there's a new French government in place and they have been imprisoning people who are kind of against the new ruler. And there's someone called the Red Rook who has been rescuing these people from prison, breaking them out and stuff. And so the new government is on the hunt for the Red Rook and somehow this hunt involves our main character. I really enjoyed it. Sophia is like a strong female character type of person, but she doesn't fit into the stereotype of the strong female character. She's very unique. Her personality is very different from like the other strong female characters you're gonna meet in like a, like a few older YA books. For example, like Katniss. I love The Hunger Games, but like she's, she's kind of like a cliche, right? Obviously back then it wasn't a cliche because that's when these kind of books were starting to become more popular. But now if someone was to write a character like that, it would be a bit cliche. But Sophia is, really strong, amazing, I love her. And Renee, her fiance, is a tall French man with red hair and blue eyes. What am I gonna do? Say no? I really enjoyed this story. It was very unique, but nothing really went like above and beyond as in like, oh, I love this book so much. 
that I would read it 200 times. So I gave it three stars on Goodreads, which is not a bad rating. Like, I don't know why I feel like I need to justify me giving a good book three stars because three stars is not a bad rating. It just means I enjoyed it. It just wasn't my favorite, you know? Anyways, our third book is Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. I read Vicious earlier, obviously, and Vengeful, I was kind of skeptical going into because I enjoyed Vicious so, so, so much that I didn't really think that Wrenchful would live up to that expectation that I had anymore. And that is kind of true. I still like Vicious way more than I like Vengeful, but Vengeful is amazing. I gave it five out of five stars on Goodreads and I just enjoyed it very, very much. I am in love with Victor Vale. In case you haven't watched me, professing my love to this character while doing blackout poetry in a previous video. Anyways, I love Victor, I love Mitch, and I love Sydney. I love them all so much, and I was so happy to start reading about them again. It was like, ah, oh, friends, I haven't seen you in so long kind of feeling when I started reading Vengeful. At first, we meet all these other characters that were not in Vicious, and I was kind of annoyed. I was like, who the heck are these people? I want to read about victor and sydney and mitch um so i was like not on board but then the story about these new characters got really interesting and i was really really into them the way v.e schwab writes is amazing to read for me like it sounds like you're having a conversation with the book and the chapters are really short which is something i really really like because it makes me feel like i'm reading a lot and it helps me read faster and i just really loved this book and I loved the characters and in the end when all these different characters that you've been reading about in different places and different times meet it's amazing it's like oh, I just freaking love this book the characters were amazing the plot was amazing five out of five stars highly recommend you read vicious and vengeful if you haven't already but I feel like everyone has and I'm a bit late to the party but that's okay if you haven't read it please read it Next, I actually have the book with me, The Boneless Mercies by April Genevieve Tchoke. This is a retelling of Beowulf, which is a fairy tale that I've never really heard of before, so I was not familiar with the story. Our four main characters, Frey, she's like the main main character, and then there's Ovi, Juniper, and Runa. They're boneless mercies, and they basically are hired to kill quickly and painlessly. For example, if someone has a terrible disease and they were dying anyway, instead of just like letting them live and suffer, people hire these boneless mercies to just come and end their life really quickly and painlessly. The boneless mercy life is kind of like not really glamorous, not glorious, they aren't praised for what they do. So these four girls decide to hunt a beast that's been terrorizing the lands um, and they go after this beast for fame and fortune and glory. I honestly loved each of the girls in this book. They're so different from one another, yet they have this perfect sense of understanding with one another. It's honestly amazing and I really enjoyed reading about them. There are some great female characters I honestly <laughs> loved like the characterization in this book. This book gave me very ominous vibes. It's a very dark and mysterious fantasy. And while you're reading, it just gives you that feeling of there is something more that I'm missing kind of thing, you know? Like it makes you keep turning the page because you're like, there's something huge that I'm missing. And I really enjoyed it. I didn't annotate it that much, um, but I do have like a few sticky notes in scenes that I really, really enjoyed. And I do have like a few notes written in there as well. I gave it three stars on Goodreads. And that is because even though the characters were really great, the story itself didn't do much for me. It didn't have any twists and turns, which I kind of understand because it is a retelling. So it has to, retell a story that already exists but for me personally it just didn't you know like strike me in the heart as hard as i would have wanted it to you know what i mean so three stars but still really enjoyed it i still recommend it it was a really fun read the characters are amazing just the story didn't really do much for me personally it's still a really good book also this cover in case you haven't been looking at it is absolutely beautiful I went to the store and I saw this and I was like, I must have it on my bookshelf immediately. And I bought it just because the cover is so pretty and I'm glad that the story was good too. Next, we're gonna be talking about To Best the Boys by Mary Weber. I was so excited 
when I got this book in the March favorites box. In case you haven't seen my unboxing video, <laughs> plug. Anyways, this book is about a girl named Ren and she competes in this competition that no girl has competed in before. This is a very male dominant society as in only boys are allowed to get an education and girls stay at home and do all like the womanly activities like sewing and baking and stuff like that. But she has been trained in math and science and all the subjects by her dad who is kind of like a researcher and she thinks that she's just as smart as all the boys and she deserves to compete in this competition too. So she goes and she competes. I really love the main character. She is really independent, really bold and I feel like she actually has the talent to back up her confidence. I have read a lot of YA books in which there's a strong female character and she's very confident and boasts about everything, but then when it actually comes to the action, she has to be rescued by some guy. That makes me so mad. But Ren has all the talent to back up her confidence and she is fully capable of rescuing herself. I honestly really love her and I love all the other characters in this book as well. I just really love the characters and the plot as well. I thought that the competition part of the book would be longer because that's predominantly what the book is about. But surprisingly, the competition itself is quite a small fraction of this book. Not too small, but it's just smaller than I expected it to be. And the book is a lot more political than I expected it to be as well. This book really explores the gap between the rich and the poor. It explores the privileges of the top 1% and it's just a lot more political than I expected it to be and I loved that I honestly really, really enjoyed this book and I gave it four stars on Goodreads. This book is really, really good, but I wouldn't call it my favorite, but it's amazing. I highly recommend you read this book. It's honestly so good. And this book is set in a bit of an older time, obviously, because women are oppressed and they wear long skirts and if they show their ankles and they're not wearing stockings, it's like scandalous. And just reading about that kind of society really just got on my nerves but I think that was the point to show how this character overcomes that society's um, prejudices and just doesn't give up on her dream just because she's a girl and can't do all the things the boys can do. I really, really, really enjoyed this book. Last but not least, I read The Assassination of Brain Rain Spurge by M.T. Anderson and Eugene Yelchin. This is a middle grade book about an elf from the elven kingdom who is sent to infiltrate the goblin kingdom. I didn't expect to like this book because I bought it just because it was very pretty and because it had amazing, amazing illustrations in it but I really enjoyed it. I gave it five out of five stars and it's really funny. It's really funny. Obviously, the humor in it is kid-friendly because it is a middle grade book, but it's still very humorous. Going into it, I thought it might be like a bit juvenile and I just wouldn't really enjoy it because it was too kiddish, but I really enjoyed it. I had a really great time reading this book and all the illustrations are so beautiful that I just had an amazing time looking through them. There's an interview with the authors at the end of the book and one of the authors, Eugene Yelchin, explains, I wanted to work on a book in which the pictures wouldn't illustrate the text like they normally do. Instead, they would actually disagree with it. They would tell a different story. So if you look at just the pictures, you're gonna get a completely different story than if you were to actually read the text in this book. I feel like the pictures are from the elf's perspective and the text is from the goblin's perspective, um, the goblin who's hosting the elf in his home. I just really enjoyed it. It was a really fun read. If you are ever in the mood to read a middle grade book, this is it. Or if you have any small cousins or siblings who would like a book recommendation, this is also it. That is all for my mini reviews. I hope you guys were at least able to get one book recommendation out of this video. If you have read one or all of these books, please let me know what you think about them. I would love to talk about books as always. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. My name is Ishi. Thanks for spending time with me and I hope your day is as wonderful as you are.